Following on from the last video, we're now going to look at implementing the different transitions from the priority finite state machine. So in the previous video, we implemented the states using an enumerated data type by checking what our state currently was and then calling the function associated with that state. So I've just added a little comment in here that these are the state functions. Now before I go on, I just want to address a mistake that was made in the last video. When we're going through to check what each state was, we had a fallback on this else that if for whatever reason our current state didn't match any of the states that we were expecting, then we reset it back to a state that we do know. Unfortunately, I put a double equal sign here, which is a comparison operator. That's asking if these two are the same values. So that would normally go in an if statement. But what I really wanted to do was have a single assignment operator. Um, so single equals is an assignment operator and that sets the current state to wait state. Okay, so that's what we needed to have. So now that I've addressed that mistake, we can continue on. So now we have our individual functions, but they're not doing anything. So what exactly do we put into each of these functions? So let's start off with the wait state. If we go back and have a look at our diagram, you can see that the wait state has an action and it also has two transitions. So the first transition is there's an enemy in the danger zone and if there is an enemy in the danger zone then what we do is we switch to the attack state. So that's a transition and that's priority one. And then we have priority two, if there's a teammate in jail then we'll switch to the jailbreak state. And then lastly, if neither of those things are happening we've got the action for the state which is turned towards the closest enemy. So what we'll do is we'll take these comments here and we'll put them across into code. So let's start with enemy in the danger zone. So in our wait state, I'll just put a comment here and we'll say if an enemy is in the danger zone, change to the attack state. Okay, so that is our first priority. We'll go back and have a look at our diagram again. Enemies in the danger zone, we need to switch to the attack state. So I've now put a comment in there that says that's the first thing we need to do. Okay, now I'll come back and do the code later, but I need to make comments throughout all my code here so that I know what code I need to write exactly where. So we break it right down to the simplest parts and then we just implement each one of those parts until we've got a working bot. So after that enemy in danger zone, we'll look at teammate in jail. So that's the second priority. So we need to check if a teammate's in jail. If it is, if there is a teammate in jail, we need to switch to the jailbreak state. Okay, so in this case, we're checking to see if a teammate is in jail. If the teammate is in jail, then we change to the jailbreak state. So we've now put both our transitions in. And then the last thing we'll do here is we'll write down what our action is. So if we go back to our wait state, turn towards closest enemy. So if we implement code in this function that does each one of those comments, then that state is complete and it will work. So before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to do the same process with the attack, jailbreak and return home functions. And now we have all our comments in. So we have now essentially done the transition from the priority finite state diagram into our coding editor. So we have all the information. We know what all our states are. 
we call the appropriate function for each state and this right here represents our transitions in the order of priority and then the action we do if we're in that state. Now there's one last thing I'll do before we start implementing each one of these functions where we start putting the code in that matches each of these comments and that is to check for common code. So if we're doing exactly the same thing in different locations that's not good coding practice because you may have to update it and you may have to update that code in multiple locations which then could end up with problems and mistakes. You also don't want to waste your time rewriting the same code over and over again. So what we'll do is we'll break out any common code into helper functions. So we have our state functions and we'll also have helper functions. So let's have a look to see if there's any common code. So in the wait state we've got this check here if an enemy is in the danger zone. Let's have a look to see if doing that action, checking if an enemy is in the danger zone, exists in any of the other states. Check if there is an enemy in the danger zone. Well it exists in the wait and the attack for different reasons. And it exists in the jailbreak if an enemy is in the danger zone. And it exists in the return home. So this particular one exists in every single function here. So doing that check is some code that will go through each of the enemy bots and see if any of them are within a certain distance of the flag. So rather than repeat that code in every single state, what we'll do is we'll go down and create a helper function and we'll call it enemy in danger zone. Now this function will return true if it finds an enemy in the danger zone and it will return false if it doesn't find an enemy in the danger zone. So I'll come back to that in a moment. And what we can do now is we could actually implement each one of these because we've got a function that takes care of the details. So if an enemy is in the danger zone, change to the attack state. So let's implement this return home one. So now we could simply say if self dot enemy in danger zone, so that'll return true or false. If there's an enemy in the danger zone, it will be true, in which case we'll do the code under here. Otherwise, it will just continue on to the next priority. So if that is true, if there's an enemy in the danger zone, like we've said in this comment here, then the action we want to put into that is statement is to change to the attack state. So if that's the case, we will say state equals state dot attack. So we've now changed our state. All right. So in our next section, we'll have to start that with an elif. So we only want to check this if that hasn't been true. Okay. And that's how we can start putting our code together. So this one, for instance, says check if a teammate is in jail. So I'm just going to remove that for now. We know we have to do that. Do you think this would happen in any other state as well? Checking to see if a teammate's in jail. Let's go have a look. Check if a teammate is in jail exists in jailbreak. So it exists in at least two different places. So that means we should have a function for that as well. So at the moment, I'm just going to put pass in that until I've got my functions. So you can see the way I'm naming these functions as well. They say what they do. So teammate in jail, that'll return true or false as well. So these are functions that check things for us. They're our helper functions. And I name them in a way where I could just look at it and immediately know what they do. Okay, so I've added all the comments. I've started to add helper functions. Once I figure out what all my helper functions are, I then go back in and I start writing all this code in here. I'll step through doing all that. That's all fairly straightforward once we've got our helper functions. I'll do that in the next video though.